Over the past few years, farmers throughout Britain have had a pretty tough time, and Mid Wales has been no exception. What with BSE and then foot and mouth, most farmers have had a very difficult time making ends meet. So what can they do to protect their livelihoods? Well, diversification might just be the answer. It's hard to believe that in an idyllic landscape like this, many farms are now facing an uncertain future. So what can farmers do to get through these times? Well, one answer is to diversify into new areas that will help provide a sustainable income. Farm diversification can take many forms, but most rely on the tourist industry. So what attracts people to Mid Wales in the first place? There's the marvellous countryside, and its wildlife, walking, cycling, both on and off-road, a romantic history with the splendid Powys Castle dating back to the 13th century, and also the picturesque Montgomeryshire Canal. And of course, one of the major attractions in the area is the world-famous Welsh Bull and Thamber Light Railway. Under the banner of Montgomeryshire Rural Enterprises, over 20 farms have got together to try to safeguard their futures. Let's see how some of its members have diversified. One farmer thought that diversification was strictly for the birds, quite literally. In the wake of foot and mouth, sheep farmer Steve Smith now runs falconry holidays and demonstrations from his farm in Castle Carignan. Foot and mouth's affected everybody in the whole of Montgomeryshire, but it hit you particularly badly, Steve. Yeah, um, we were taken out here um, on Good Friday last year, if you can call it Good Friday. Um, a neighbour, unfortunately, had had some deaths in his young lambs called in the vets and they diagnosed a positive foot and mouth. So all the neighbouring farms have taken us contiguous. So that's when all, all your animals were put down? Yeah, fortunately we had uh, 80 pedigree Texel ewe lambs away. So we had a, a, a base from which to start again and some commercial ewe lambs away from home so that we'd be able to start with some stock. So two years ago all these empty buildings I can see behind us here would have been full of animals. Yeah, well we had the show sheep for that year in these buildings, hoping that they would be able to keep whatever happened, we would keep that stock. They were disinfected every day, the, the threshold was disinfected, um, and we pleaded to try to keep at least those, but we were unable to. Now, since then, you've diversified in a most unusual way. Yes, um, we're doing something a little bit different in that um, we're, we're running falconry classes and um, we've, we've converted a building in for accommodation. Have you found that these are very popular? Yes, surprisingly so, especially with locals. We, we mainly um, intended for, for tourists um, to come, but we're, we're having quite a few um, locals. Falconer Phil Turner has teamed up with Steve to show the public how marvellous the birds look in flight. This is a peregrine hybrid falcon, the fastest bird on the planet. As well as the falconry holidays, they also perform at country fairs and shows. Incredibly warm weather for falcons. As well as the Harris hawks and peregrines, they also work with owls, kestrels and buzzards. Is it easier now that you kind of haven't got all your eggs in one basket? Yeah, well I think I would have done something different, whatever the state of farming. It, it isn't, it, I think the last, the last thing you need to do is diversify if you need money. It, it, you need to take time because um, obviously it's going to be maybe three years before we make any money from this. So if we were expecting to make money immediately, it's not going to happen. Um, it's an investment for the future. 
I love birds and to be able to handle them and see them close up like this is just marvellous. If this is diversification, I'm all for it. Now let's go and see what the other farmers are up to. Here at Newbridge Dairy Farm in Maivod, John and Adrian Williams have recently converted a farm building into two self-catering cottages. Staying here is a great way of seeing a working farm in action. Adrian, this wonderful cottage is obviously part of your diversification. Yes, yes it is. Yeah, we're quite pleased now we've finished it. Took us a while, but uh, we got there. <laughs> and you advertise not only for families, but for fishermen as well. Why is that? Because the river's very close by, and we've got several stretches. Um, we've got both the rivers Banway and Vernway, very close here to here, and uh, quite good fishing, so they tell me, so we thought tie the boat in, really. This is Jim Finlay from the Widdle. He's a regular on this stretch of the River Vernway. It's great to come down for the fishing, the beauty, the peace and quiet. There's lots of fish in the river, Ver various varieties from trout, salmon, grayling, chub, dace. Recently I've seen otters, kingfishers. There's lots of wildlife about, if, even if the fish aren't to be caught. Do you find now then that you get mainly families, or do you get a mixture of families and yeah, fishermen? Yeah, we get a mixture really. It depends on the time of the year. I think um, fishermen tend to come out of season and they come for sort of long weekends or midweek breaks. Um, some come for a week, but the families come sort of during the holiday season, obviously, you know. And have you got any other attractions here? Uh, yes, yeah, so we have the milking parlour. Mm. We've got a special uh, stand they can go and watch. You know, not in the way, they're quite safe, so you know, they can watch the milking. John and Adrian have a commercial dairy herd of 90 Frisians. Twice a day, guests can have a front row seat as John milks the cows. The farm has been in John's family for over 40 years. And if you hadn't gone down this line, would you still be in business now, would you think? Probably, but it would be quite tough. Because I did go out to work full time, but we found it was too hard, really, with family as well. And uh, I've got to think of the boys. We've got three boys and, you know, hopefully there'll be something here for them to carry on, maybe. But uh, as it was, it wasn't an option, really. Where would farming be without cooking and eating? At Porth Farm near Kersus, Lavinia Vaughan gives cookery demonstrations in a house which dates back to the 15th century. She always uses locally grown ingredients in her recipes. I diversified because of my real passion for food, my wanting to share my skills and pass on my skills to other people. And there's no, there's no nicer way than sharing company than, than with people and food. Food is the kernel of our life. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Porth. Um, I'm going to demonstrate today a lamb dish for the barbecue because we have this lovely weather and I think we need to make most use of our local produce. So I've, here I've got a pound of lamb mince which I'm going to put into the processor. Uh, I do cookery demonstrations and tutorials for local groups and tourist groups, weekends and mini breaks as well. Right, I think that's whisked enough, yes, but it's still very moist, okay? So if you were making a pavlova, would you put that on, on paper? Yes, I would turn up my pavlova onto the paper on a baking tray. I have a real passion for food, which I want to share with everyone else. I love sharing food, and here in Montgomeryshire we have such high-quality local food. Lavinia's belief and passion for Montgomeryshire's high-quality meat and organic food has now whet the appetite of a leading supermarket chain. They're currently looking at ways of bringing her dishes to the mouths of millions. Watch this space. Some farms have taken to the saddle and now offer riding courses and holidays. Here at Abebechan, near Newtown, on an organic farm, even youngsters can learn how to ride and look after a pony for a weekend. Meet Brian and Karen Bebb and their son, George. As well as the riding courses, they also break and stable horses for clients from all over the country. Karen, what made you diversify in the first place? Um, our farm income was getting less and less. We found out that in the bank that we seem to be getting more and more overdrawn, still working really hard. So we, we just looked at other things that we could do with the resources that we had. But why choose horses and horse riding? It's, it's always been my passion. It's been something I've loved. 
and always wanted to, to do a bit more with it, so it was just ideal, really. And if you were still farming, the amount of money coming in just wouldn't be enough now? No, nowhere near, nowhere near. And has it been successful? Yes, yes, very successful. We've really enjoyed it. Um, and we've got quite a lot of horses still waiting to come and people phoning all the time. So, yeah, it's been really successful. We had to do a fair bit of work along here, Brian. Yes, we had to do something to a lot of these buildings. They were derelict and unsafe, so by doing them up, we're getting an income back as well from them and keeping the traditional buildings. Other than these horses, what else have you done? Uh, we upgraded the farm to organic status a few years ago. Uh, within the last 18 months, we've diversified into organic free-range chickens, uh, which is a successful enterprise. We have a thousand lame birds in two sheds. Uh, that, that keeps us busy. We're on a contract with, and the eggs go to Waitrose. And all of this means that you're now making enough money, whereas before you'd have had a hard time. Yeah, it, it's meant that we can carry on farming and help us keep the, the family farm going, really. That's the idea of it. And make use of old buildings, which otherwise would become derelict. And I assume bringing people in to work. Yeah, we've got at least five or six horses here to work and break at the moment, and they're coming in from different areas, which creates work for us and for others. Modern day farm horse is the quad bike, and here at Madian Quads, Nima Chantith, everybody can have a go. Well, and that was great fun. What made you go down this line in the first place? Well, I've always loved bikes and quad bikes, and um, I thought do something that I really enjoy doing. So we decided to go down this line, really. I don't like horses that much, so I thought instead of pony trekking, I'll, I'd do quad trekking instead. And it's worked for you? Yes, we've been busy. We've got 10 bikes now and two people working for us full time and uh, yeah, we're quite busy at the moment. So you're actually bringing in work for local people then? Yes, we've got two full time workers here and about eight part time in the holidays. So yes, they're all local people and we train them for the first aid and uh, yes, it's nice to see local people working here. Would you recommend diversification to other farmers? Yes, I would recommend it, but it's a big risk when you start off whatever venture you start off with. It's not for everybody, but as farming is going at the moment, people have got to think about some, something else to do on the farm. Uh, it's hard work, but yes, it, it is working at the moment. Four years now we've been doing it, and it's nice to see people coming back that have been here from the beginning, really. So there are a few examples of how farmers have diversified in Montgomeryshire. If you think it'll work for you, make sure you do your market research and also identify any grants or funding available. It probably won't be easy and the returns might not be quick, but in the long run, it may just be your best bet. Well, I've had a wonderful time visiting all these Montgomeryshire farms, some great people and wonderful scenery. I just feel I need a little bit more practice on this. See you later. <laughs>